Hey guys, it's Chris. It has been a while since I've been around to do an update, so I thought I'd try to get a late January, early February update in. I haven't done a whole lot of stitching, just a lot of stuff's going on recently. I've had a really brutal cold viral thing going on the last week or so, um, so if my voice sounds funny, that would be why. Well, funnier than normal. And... Um, just some other stuff that I'll tack on at the end for anyone who may be interested. I'll do kind of the same format I've always done. I'll keep my whips and updates and work and stuff in the front, and then I'll show some haul and then maybe some personal stuff. I don't really do tags because by the time I get around to doing the tags, it's already yesterday's news, so there's not much point. But yeah. I know some people are fussing lately about not liking haul, and you know what? I like haul, so I'm going to keep adding it. But anyway, I digress as usual. The first piece I have is a new start and a finish, which I haven't bothered iron yet. Sorry, it looks a little ragged. Um, I actually forgot that I had done it before I started pulling my things together to shoot this video. So this was for a stitch along in Stitch Mania called... Love is in the air, maybe. And it was for February. It could be Valentine's related, love related, something for someone you love. You kind of get the gist. Anything to do with love. So this was a freebie from the Primitive Hair uh, called Valentine. I stitched it on a 25 count linen that I got in a uh, grab bag from Silk Weavers a couple of years ago. And I stitched this with Mohs Silks. Just two different shades, which I couldn't tell you the names of the shades right now. But it shows up a lot better than light when you're kind of far back. You can't see this. It looks like it fades into the, the fabric, but it really does show up. This is something I intended to either frame up or make into a pillow and send to my boyfriend for Valentine's Day. Because he is, was unable to be here this year. But... Uh, I wasn't feeling really well and I didn't get to the to anywhere to buy a frame or fabric so it's not done yet I still haven't actually decided what I want to do with it either a little white frame like a wooden frame or maybe make it into a pillow if I can get my mother to help me because we all know I'm a terrible seamstress but that's my first piece that I worked on and finished and then my second is another new start I didn't get very far on this. Um, I, I really like it, but I just didn't get very far. It is the Snowflower Diaries Stitch Along Joyful World, I believe it's called, and it's a freebie, and I will link their website below as well. You've probably seen this going around on a couple different people's videos. Uh, it's adorable. It's a bunch of little different woodland creatures and birds. This one will be a fox. This is January, um, but it's all free. So this is on 32 count toasted almond linen from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And the needle minder is from Gina, which isn't that adorable? It's a scissors. I love it. Okay. So there's that. You know how I said I wasn't going to buy anything this year? I'm a big fat liar and we'll get to that soon. The third thing I worked on was my Clouds Factory Biscornu, the Doctor Who Biscornu. I had had the top finished. And then, you know, I was going to stitch the back. No biggie. I was going to put it together and it was going to take me like a day. You know, that was my intention. And I got all of this done. And while well, I did this up here, this motif, and I messed it up and I had to pick it out. And this fabric is horrible to stitch on with the sparklies. It is just a huge pain in my batuki. So anyway, I re-stitched it and I thought, gee, I wonder why I messed that motif up. That is so dumb. And there's five of these motifs on this. And I was sitting at work. I was um, going to have a sleep study after, or no, I was going to pulmonary associates for my sleep study consult after work. And I had about an hour to kill. So I was sitting in the break room and I was stitching and everybody from day shift that I don't normally get to see was stopping by to chat and say hi and Oh, what are you doing? Are you, are you counting that? That is so cool. And I messed it up again. 
and it's like a, and I don't even know how or where I messed it up, but it's got to be picked out that whole motif and redone. At which point I felt like throwing it at the wall. So I haven't touched it since. So it'll get done someday. And then the third thing I have been working on, mostly at work, is Red Riding Hood from the Primitive Hair. So beautiful. The last time you saw her, I had red stitched and about this much of the wolf. So I finished the wolf. I did that during um, the blizzard that we had here on the East Coast, Jonas. I finished stitching up the wolf. I ran up here with the red, and then I started stitching the very, 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 very massive black border that I thought, again, would take like a couple of days. Yeah, that's like three days worth of work at work, working on that. So I got sick of black, so I stopped working on that, and I picked up Tree of Life, no, Tree of Hope from Mirabilia, which love so much. And I don't know why. I was really resisting the urge this weekend to start something new because I don't need to start anything new. I have a lot of whips. And uh, yeah, just nothing new. So the last time you saw this, I had stitched the tree. I had Penelope done and just a little bit of the branches. So I built up the branches a little bit further started working on some of this dark green and was stitching with some of the water lilies. So that's how far I got with Tree of Hope. It's so gorgeous. I love it. And that is on 28 Count Willow Wisp from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And I'm going to have to, I forgot to bring a picture of this. This is my Heaven and Earth design. This was actually the first thing I worked on this month. Um, the last time you saw it, I had maybe one block done and then I stitched another this is 25 count so these are all four blocks so I stitched further down into the column this is called restless tonight and I will go ahead and link a picture of this um, I'm gonna pause this for a second so I can get all of my haul into place so I'm not jiggling this iPad around and you know if you're not into haul See ya. Bye-bye. Um, if you like haul, then just keep watching. I'll be right back. Okay, so for you, no time has passed, but for me, it's been about 15 minutes of getting all of this stuff together. Bear in mind that these were several different orders from several different places, so it looks like well, it is. It looks like a massive amount, and it is It is really a lot of stuff, and I'm sorry for the jiggling. Um, but when I committed to not buying any stash, I meant it. And when I go off the wagon with something, I go all the way off the wagon. I don't mess around. So things were a little weird and rough around here. I wasn't feeling too great stuff was going on and I needed some retail therapy. So I, I bought stuff and that's just how it goes. The first thing I bought myself, I thought, well, I'm not going to get any patterns because I do not need patterns. I'm just going to buy some new Q-snap covers. And I thought, oh, look, see, look, it's, it's, it's Red Riding Hood. I need that for my red. How cute is that? So I ordered that. And then as I'm looking, I see that they have a new TARDIS Q-snap cover, and I needed a new 8x8 Q-snap cover, so I got this. I think it's really pretty. So I got those, and those are from H Cat Crafts. I'll send the link, or I'll put the link in the bottom, rather. And then I made a 1-2-3 stitch order. These are going to be all mixed up, but anyway, I had a 1-2-3 stitch order. And I had been looking at this pattern. It's from the Sweetheart Tree. It's called Tiny Thistle. And I can't say thistle, so you can make fun of me now. But it's Tiny Thistle. And I just think, so pretty. I was watching a lot of Outlander, and it made me think of Outlander. 
And then I had stopped in my local needle workshop and I got, this was the weeks that goes with this. It's the only thing I didn't have. So I picked that up. And then I was watching Heather's video, the Springfield Stitcher, about, um, she got her free gift from the By the Bay Needle Arts Serenity um, Bay Sampler. And I got in on that, um, not sampler, Serenity Bay Sal. Serenity, anyway, whatever it was called. I got in late on it. So I wasn't eligible for the free gift. And Heather messaged me and said, I think she's selling it on her webs or on her Etsy store. You can go in and check and order it. And I didn't want to order just that. I had to justify the shipping. So I went ahead and got a couple of patterns. Because, I, I mean, I had to. There's just nothing I could do. So I have the other half of this, which is a boy mermaid. And so I got, I thought I had ordered this one. And I actually ordered the boy. So I went ahead and picked this up. And it's out of print. So I thought I, I had to get it. I had that. And then I got, I'm a sucker for seasonal things, like a lot of you. And I got the Winter Cove, which I think is just gorgeous. And then I also picked up the uh, Serenity Harbor gift that she sent. And it didn't cost much, so, and it's really nice. Someday I'll actually do that. When I stopped at my local needle workshop, they finally had this in stock, the needle worker kit. So I picked that up. Oh, and they also told me that the owner is going to Nashville. And if there's anything I want, if I see it online, just let them know and they'll pick it up for me. Isn't that awesome? So yeah. So I'm trying not to look at stuff, but I'm looking at stuff. And then... Uh, another one, two, three stitch order. This is a separate one, two, three stitch order. I finally caved and got peacock pinwheels. Tempting Tangles designs were on sale. So I picked that up. Mackenzie has been tempting me with this for months and months and months. And I just, I had to get it since it was on sale. And then I picked up the uh, classic color works that go with it. When I ordered that, I mean, I couldn't just order that, right? So I also got uh, the Drawn Thread, the Butterfly Garden, I think this one's called. Yes, the Butterfly Garden. And I think Mrs. Milky Bar Kit had stitched this, and I fell in love with it back when she was doing it. So I'm planning to do this just with threads from my stash if I can and not buy anything new. And then this happened. Well, yeah, I'll do this now. Okay, so... I'm not a big Prairie Schooler fan, but the more people are Prairie Schooler crazy with them going out of business or ending their business, whatever the case may be, I, I had to get this. I have been watching um, Jan from Thread Garden Stitch this for so long. I just fell in love with it. So I got them all. A, B, C, D, E, F, the much coveted, and I don't understand why, G, H, I. JKL, MNO, PQR, STU, VWX, Y and Z. I am crazy, so I'm planning to stitch that all in one piece, kind of like Jan from Thread Garden. So I'm going to try to send her a message and ask her advice. I'm sure it's going to be a massive piece of uh, fabric that I'm going to need. And then, just because it looked like fun, I got some mill hook boots from 123 Stitch. Those were two separate orders from 123 Stitch. One from Stitching Bits and Bobs. And I have a story for Stitching Bits and Bobs. And by the bay. So that's all the patterns. So I got this cute little turtle. And Harry Connick Jr. has a an album from the 90s called Star Turtle, which didn't do very well. If you know who Harry Connick Jr. is for his music, he is, um, people say he sounds like Frank Sinatra. He doesn't sound like Frank Sinatra. But anyway, uh, he did this New Orleans funk kind of, 
complete departure from what he was known for, and people hated it. I love it. My friends and I love it. And he did this CD called Star Turtle. So I'm actually going to maybe try to find a star charm to put right in the middle of his back and change it up a little bit so I can have my little star turtle. If I think about it, I'll insert a picture of the back of that CD just for fun. Um, I also got a little cardinal. My mom loves cardinals. <clears throat> and I'm getting a really bad cramp in my hand. And the little dragonfly egg. So cute. And these two are for my next door neighbor. She loves a band called Celtic Thunder. So I'm going to stitch that for her. She's also Irish, so she'll like that. And then this is for her for Christmas next year. A little cat in a box, and she has a little ginger cat, so I think she'll like that. I got some needle minders. This is from Gina. This is from Gina. Love Mardi Gras. Can't resist a fleur de when I see it. Um, you know, we're going to start sticking together. And these are all from Nifty Needle Nannies. Again, these were multiple orders. They weren't all one order. So we got some Mardi Gras, some Angel Wings, little Cindy Lou Who, some birds, a Frappuccino, and then I had to get my uh, Weeping Angel, which started it all. And the TARDIS, she popped in there for free because it was my first order. Okay, so fabric. I just picked up a piece of 32 count. What is this called? 32 count winter moon. I got that from uh, 123 Stitch. Sorry, losing my train of thought. And this color. These are from a grab bag from Steph. They're 32 count Joblin. So they're just off dyes, I guess. This is like a really, really springy, avocado y looking green. It's pretty bad that I look at these and I kind of think what they might have been. This reminds me of the Pandora. Really pretty, bluish purple. And this looks like the Caramel Macchiato. And then this was the Fabric of the Month. And it is called Rhiannon. This is 28 count Joblin. So it's pretty blue, bluey, purpley. And she said a mystery color. So I don't know what the mystery color is, but there that is. So. <clears throat> the Stitching Bits and Bobs story. I'll do that really quick. So, I ordered the Stitching Bits and Bobs, uh, the Prairie Schooler stuff, and GH and I was on a limited reprint, so I knew I would be waiting. And about a week and a half later, I went in, and you know how you have to enter your order number and your last name, and nothing came up. So I was like, well, crap. So I go into PayPal, and it's like, no, I, I sent them the money. And I looked in my email and, you know, I have, well, obviously I have the order number because that's where I got the order number from. So I kind of clicked a couple things and I ended up resubmitting the payment through PayPal again. And I was just like, oh, crap. I'm, it's going to be so hard to get a hold of them. Their business hours are during what is the middle of the night for me. So there's no way I can call them. Crap, 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 crap. And there's no way that I could find to take back the transaction without filing a com complaint with PayPal. So I emailed Stitching Bits and Bobs, and I've heard so many horror stories. I think, you know, I'm never going to hear back from them. It's just not going to happen. So I worded it very nicely. I blamed it all on my own ineptness and PayPal screwing things up. And by the way, why can't I check my order number? Why, why is it coming up blank? And they actually emailed me back within 24 hours. They refunded the overpayment, the second payment, and said, oh, no, we're waiting for a chart, and, you know, we'll let you know when we ship it. Okay. Then another week or so goes by, and I thought, I'm going to check my order number, and my order number is still not showing up. And I was like, crap. I wonder if they canceled everything. I told them not to cancel everything. I wonder if they... They did by accident. So I emailed them again. And again, I heard back within like a day, a day and a half that, nope, your order's fine. The chart should be here within like the next day or two and we'll send it out. And yeah, I got it like a couple days later. So 
I was really excited that I heard back from them and that that worked out and that they were very quick. And I don't know if somebody there might be watching Floss Tube and they, they've heard kind of the, you know, your customer service could be better. We love your prices and everything, but you could put the customer service in too, which I now have to say I had excellent customer service from Stitching Bits and Bobs. So that is amazing. Um, what else did I want to tell you about? Oh, so the last time I talked to you, I was having like the weird heart palpitations that I was going to die thing. So I had my sleep studies and it turns out that I do have mild obstructive sleep apnea and it's overall mild, but when I'm in, meaning when I'm not in REM, which is the deep sleep when you dream, I have almost nothing. Uh, when I go into REM, I don't have apneas per se. We call them hypopneas. It's like a little mini apnea. You still get a little bit of air through your airway, um, but your sats still drop. And mine dropped considerably low. They dropped down into the mid-70s, which isn't good. Uh, that's hard on the heart. It, it makes your brain unhappy. It's just bad. And when that was happening, I was getting some runs of tachycardia. So it was making my heart angry when it was doing that. And that was probably what was happening that night as I was drifting off to sleep. I was so sleep deprived that I was going into REM right away. And I think that's what was happening. So I'm wearing CPAP now. I had a second sleep study with CPAP titration. A lot of people fuss about CPAP. My patients complain about it every night. I don't get it. I love it. I think it's awesome. Um... The thing that kind of sucks for me is I also have something called alpha wave intrusion where you're sleeping, you're sleeping, sleeping, sleeping's awesome. Boom, here's some alpha waves, which is awake, brain waves. That shouldn't happen when you're sleeping. It's called alpha intrusion. And when that happens, you basically will never feel fully rested. You just won't. Um... I know that my coworker told me when he did my, my CPAP titration, when he kept me sleeping better with the CPAP, I didn't have as much alpha intrusion, but I had more REM and you don't get alpha intrusion in REM. So I don't really know what's going to go on with that. As a sleep tech, I thought there was no treatment for alpha intrusion. It was a live with it kind of thing. Uh, doing some research online, I've found that they sometimes prescribe a drug called Neurontin. It sometimes helps, very unlikely to help, and they don't know why when it does help, they have no idea why it helps. But, eh, I, I don't think that I'm even willing to try it because I don't want to take medications that I don't have to take. So anyway, even though my sleep apnea is fixed, and my heart is now happy and I won't die in my sleep, I'm still never going to really, truly feel rested, which kind of sucks. Other than that, things have been good. Um, I've been busy. Work's busy. We're really, really busy at work right now. Um, you know, just, just doing stuff. Trying to get back into stitching. And, you know, I had some days where I didn't stitch at all because I just had no energy. But I am feeling more rested with the CPAP, so that makes me happy. So, moral of the story, guys, if you're having weird symptoms and you think something is wrong, go to your doctor, ask for the test, appropriate tests, and have them done. Not one time did anybody ever offer me a sleep study, and I have had insomnia and sleeping issues for half of my life, and no one ever suggested I had have a sleep study. I had to bring it up, which... I don't understand. We're always hoping for better family doctor education that they will assess when things need to be done. But some of them aren't really, really good at that. They're quick to slap you onto sleeping pills and antidepressants when, if you do have sleep apnea, that's just going to make your sleep apnea worse. So, yeah. And as a sleep tech, I know that as just an average person, I wouldn't know it. But yeah, if you if you feel like something's wrong, get it checked out. If you're having high blood pressure issues where mine was always low and starting to creep up, untreated sleep apnea is definitely 
something that can cause that. So now that I'm on CPAP, my blood pressure is dropping back down to where it always was before, so that's good. So I think I'm going to clean up this mess. I think I'm going to go stitch. As always, thank you to everyone who subscribes and comments and likes my videos. To the person in the UK who doesn't like my videos, you can keep disliking them all. There's one, one person in the UK who spent a day going through most all of my videos and watching them and thumbs downing them. Just, you know what? That's what floats your boat, and that's what makes you happy. Keep on doing it. You could just not watch them if you don't like them. That would work, too. But whatever. For all of my great subscribers who are positive and, and leave lovely comments, you know, thank you for that. I really do appreciate it. Have a good day, guys. Happy stitching. <laughs>